Hey guys, my name's Brad, grab your Bibles. Let's go through the Word. Well, we are in Luke 16, verses 19 through 31, so let's get to it. Here is what is recorded for us in God's Word. So there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you is a great chasm that has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warm them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. A lot has been discussed regarding the contents of this particular passage of Scripture. Uh, One thing, uh, first and foremost, this is unlike the other parables we've seen. Uh, It's very clear how the parables start in the gospel. Here, it starts differently. We get right into it, and then we also have one of the characters actually named for us in this parable. But here's something else that I think is important. This parable is more about the living than it is the dead. Much discussion has been given regarding the realm of the dead, and and we're just not going to get into that in this particular time, but certainly if you have questions, you can send them our way. But this is more about the living. We see a situation where this rich man um, finds himself uh, in torment, and he finds himself in, in, in this place and all on account of the, his choice of lifestyle. Remember, this comes on the heels of what was spoken about the Pharisees. The Pharisees loved their wealth. So Jesus here is now emphasizing there's consequences to the way that you live your life. Uh, And so we see this rich man who now is wanting to to go and warn his brothers about what is to come, that if if they don't listen to the message, if they don't repent, then they will share this same fate. And what does verse 31 say? It says, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. Um, There are many who today believe, you know what, if Jesus just did one more miraculous thing, if this awesome sign would occur, then I would believe. And we need to be very careful because let us not forget that it is Jesus himself who did so many convincing signs, the miracles that were performed, and there were many who were still not convinced of him. So what do we gain from this? Uh, Well, now is the time to repent. Now is the time to believe the message. And what does Romans 10, 14 say? Consequently, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so what greater sign can we have than the very word that has been preserved for us from our God, the gospel message of Jesus Christ? Um, It is so important to believe in who Jesus is, to repent and to turn to him. And so what do we do then as we live out our faith here as believers in light of this parable? Well, it's so important for us to share the gospel. Uh, that those around us hear this truth, that they might come to repentance and live uh, in light of the the life that is found in Jesus. And we have to be true to that message and continue to pray for those who may not be convinced of this word. We pray for their souls. We pray that that one day their heart will be open to this truth, but but we continue to be true to it and share it. I'm going to be honest with you as we get ready to close with prayer. This is very challenging for me because as you listen, maybe you have family members, um, friends, siblings, spouses who do not know Jesus as Lord. Are we telling them? How often have we shared with them this truth? Um, So while we're challenged, convicted, 
I'm at the top of the list. <laughs> um, let's pray now uh, as we as we reflect in our time together. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your word. Um, there are passages such as this that are challenging to our hearts. Um, are we being bold with your word? Are we sharing your truth with others? Um, and Lord, I pray that as we think about the opportunities we're given, uh, may we not squander them, that there are people in our life who need to repent, uh, and may we uh, rely upon your Holy Spirit in conjunction with the very word that your Spirit has inspired, sharing that truth and that it takes root in their hearts. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. So let us be true to this message. And Lord, I, I pray for those who have heard and maybe they've not been convinced yet, I pray that they will see the truth of who you are and believe. So we pray this now in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless, guys. We'll see you next time. Remember to like, subscribe, and click that bell.